Good morning, everyone, and God bless you. Please share this broadcast. We have a very, very special guest with us today. We have three-star General Thomas McInery, who served in the United States Air Force, as well as top military positions under the Secretary of Defense and the United States Vice President. Uh, General McInery served in the Vietnam War and has flown over 407 combat missions during his four tours of duty. In addition to his Vietnam service, General McInery also served overseas in NATO, Pacific Air Forces, and as commander of the 11th Air Force in Alaska. He has since stayed very busy um, as he has been a military analysis for over 16 years. General McInery, thank you for joining us today. Last night, you had an explosive interview where you made it abundantly clear your thoughts on the 2020 election uh, by saying, quote, this is the last free election we will have. This is not voter fraud, this is treason. They are attempting an insurrection in this nation. General, what did you mean by that for those who may not understand what's really going on? Well, Anna, you heard me last night and uh, uh, the reason I, I made those very explosive and pointed comments is I heard the president earlier in the day speaking with uh, Maria on Fox News, Barcelona. And uh, he talked about fraudulent voting acts and that these are not fraudulent voting acts, but it's treason. When you coordinate six to 10 states using cyber warfare to change the outcome, these are treasonous acts, not fraudulent or political dirty tricks. It's treason. And, uh, and it's important that your listeners understand that using cyber warfare in the Dominion voting system, which 30 of those states had, and which uh, the battleground states had, as well as a CIA rogue network that the Obama administration took with them called Hammer and Scorecard. It was designed for anti-terrorists. Plus, you have seen no FBI or Department of Justice comments on this voting, and it is absolutely the, the largest cyber warfare act against the voting system in history, clearly against the U.S. Finally, the uh, former director of the CISA, which is the Cyber Warfare Intelligence Security Agency, a chap by the name of Chris Krebs, who was fired, was on 60 Minutes last night and other networks before, saying this was the most perfect election that we've ever had. Yet it was by far the largest cyber warfare uh, election intrusions that we've ever had. So this gentleman is guilty of treason, even though he is a Republican. He's guilty of treason to make a statement like that. For instance, in the state of Pennsylvania, the state put out 1.5 million of uh, ballots for mail-in ballots to, excuse me, 1.8 million mail-in ballots, they, ballots they sent out. They counted 2.5 million mail-in ballots. So where did these 700,000 ballots come from? Nowhere, but if someone had a printing press out there and was cranking them out. Look at the down ballots. The uh, Demo Republicans were supposed to lose and, uh, they had 27 people up for re-election, all of 27 won, plus they flipped 13 to date, I think, and there's still more to come. So it doesn't make common sense, it doesn't pass the sniff test, and because of the danger of where we are, I am recommending that the president execute the executive order that he signed on the 18th of the, on the 12th of September 2018, uh, talking about it's a national emergency 
with foreign influence on our voting system. He should implement that act. It's an executive order. It's an emergency. And also he ought to implement the Insurrection Act because we will have an insurrection with Black Lives Matter and Antifa. What we are seeing, Anna, is hybrid warfare in the 21st century. And we must understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to turn over this government. We know that the Russians, the Chinese, and the Iranians were involved with it as well. They have not even tried to be covert on it. It's been blatant. Mm -hmm. Trucks driving up at 2 in the morning and uh, unloading box loads of uh, ballots. You know, so many people have been involved in this. You have six states that were involved with it. And uh, Sidney Powell put in one of in her lawsuit against the state of Georgia. She had an expert in there, uh, 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 intelligence community expert, who talked about it. And he said, he concluded the following. The vote count distribution in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia are not based on normal system operations. Instead, they are caused by fraudulent electronic manipulation of the targeted voting machines. For instance, mm -hmm. at 2.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 4th of November, TV broadcasts reported that Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia had decided to cease voting, vote counting operations and will continue the following day. This unanimous decision by five states to initially stop counting in all of these battleground states is unprecedented and it demonstrated prior coordination by election officials in battleground states. This was too obvious. That's and right. So, That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and so with, with these two situations that I've just given you in the time we have, examples of how blatant it was, and Chris Krabs calls it the most perfect election, you know there is collusion and it is treasonous activity to overthrow a government. It is part of the 21st century hybrid warfare using cyber warfare and uh, in addition to the, the, the machines by Dominion, they're also using the CIA system I told you about. Yes. Was It's called Hammer and Scorecard. Scorecard is like an app on your iPhone, and it just knows what the total votes are, and then it modulates it to, swip it, to flip it and have 3% higher than, in this particular case, Biden would end up 3% higher. So in all, the, all those states, President Trump was ahead at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. When they came back up online, for instance, at 0400 in Michigan, 138,000 votes came in for Biden. And, and that was the number that it meant that they were now ahead uh, of President Trump. So what we have got to do because it is serious. It is not fraudulent activity, as, as the president is talking about. It is treason. And with treason, you have got to take some very dramatic actions. And I believe the president, by invoking his executive order and the Insurrection Act, should then also declare martial law. He should suspend habeas corpus and start arresting those people because we know who they are. And we should start arresting them. And we're going to need military tribunals because it's obvious the corruption, i.e., look at General Flynn and Judge Sullivan and the corruptness there. The, the corruptness and the glacial pace of our judicial system cannot compete with what the founding fathers, who never heard of cyber warfare, but they heard of what? They heard of what Sorry. I took an oath and the president mm -hmm. and all people that work for the government to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. We have both foreign and domestic enemies here, and that's why I believe he should take this urgent action and declare the uh, martial law, suspend the Electoral College meeting on 14 December, and suspend the uh, Inauguration Act uh, on 20 January. Until this is cleared up, 
And once it's cleared up with military tribunals, the American people must then get the hard facts of what the Democrats have done in this election, and along with the Russians, Chinese, and Iranians. Does anybody think the Russians, Chinese, or Iranians will miss President Trump? They want him gone in a, in a heart flash. So let's demand the president. Let's tell the president, this is too serious to use the normal procedures we're using. You must enact those actions I just briefed everybody. Demand we do it. And look, there are going to be at least 85 million. I believe there'll be over 100 million Americans that will support this. And why will they support it? Democrats don't want a crooked election. Not all of them. Some of them do. And obviously there are enough that were part of this that think, well, we're just doing dirty tricks. No, this is treason against our government. After this, there will be no free elections in this country. If they use the same thing down in Georgia, we already know the outcome. I predicted this the Sunday before the election when I found out about it. When on uh, Steve Bannon. Uh, who was co-hosted by Sidney Powell and told everybody about they had hammer and scorecard and they were going to try to steal another election. Obama and Biden used this in 2012 to win Florida. And uh, it was used in the primaries for Biden to win against Bernie uh, Sanders in Georgia. Does anybody think that there was the black population that turned the tide for Bernie, well, they do think this. It was scorecard that changed and manipulated the data That's down right. there on the primaries. And Bernie was told us they tried to do this in 2016, but because it was thwarted, this time they had far more robust efforts to do it. And that's why you had to stop the vote counting at 2.30. That's why you had trucks driving up with all these mail-in ballots, which everybody knew had no chain of accountability to them or chain of custody. And so that's where we are, Anna. We yes. have an urgent situation in America. So you're saying, okay, so there is obviously constitutional um, roads to victory. If the Democrats were honest, if they were not as corrupt and treasonous and have attempted coup d'etats, you know, since 2017. So you're saying instead of, um, you know, going forward the way that we normally would constitutionally through the court system actually have military tribunals and try these uh, corrupt politicians because we can't trust them. We, we've seen it for the past four years how untrustworthy they are. Let's go back to the CIA for a second. What can you tell us about the CIA uh, servers, that, that CIA server farm that was busted in Frankfurt, Germany? What can you say about that? Well, my initial reports, and I'm still trying to get verification on them, were because I had announced it on the Monday before the election, that they decided to move their server out of the Port Washington area and overseas so they could do this manipulation. And they moved into a CIA facility, rogue CIA, in Frankfurt, and that the Special Operations Forces went in and took it down, Delta Force. Now, I haven't gotten confirmation. They've gone silent on that. But the fact is that Mark Esper was fired as Secretary of Defense because he had problems with the Insurrection Act and not understanding what was going on. Mm. And who did the president put in? He put in Chris Miller. Chris Miller is a former Green Beret. He understands special operations. He understands what is going on. There's a lot of naivete in this country right now. Uh, we had treasonous acts on, quote, the Russian hoax. But calling it a hoax doesn't say it should have been the Russian Treasonous Act against an administration. And look what has happened with Barr and John Durham. What about the John Durham report? He's been investigating this for two plus years. And, and you and I know, just like you and I know what's going on right now and what I've just told you and the hard evidence and uh, the bureaucracy, the swamp is ignoring this. And you even had Fox News flip. I worked for them for 16 and a half years, Anna. I cannot envision 
what they are doing, and I know a lot of the anchors have got problems with it, but Rupert Murdoch cut a deal with George Soros, mm. and, and it was too obvious mm -hmm. what Fox did. They declared uh, five minutes after the polls closed in Virginia that uh, Biden had won. Look, mm -hmm. Trump was winning that until they'd laid hours, and then uh, I believe they manipulated using cyber warfare even in Virginia, and I voted in Virginia. Yeah, and, and I it's can a red state. You, so it's even more widespread than just the battleground states. Sure. But if you flip three states or four, I forget what it is, if you flip Georgia, if you flip Pennsylvania, if you flip Michigan, mm -hmm. I think that gives, uh, and you've still got Arizona and Nevada out there, uh, and Wisconsin, that Trump won, by the way, uh, if the real figures were, were given. Then he has won the Electoral College. Uh, the question is, because the forefathers, our founding fathers, didn't understand cyber warfare, how could they? I mean, most of the judges today don't. You, you see a judge down in Georgia saying, you know, seal off those uh, voting machines, and then he releases it, and then I guess he put it back on. Um, they don't understand what's going on in cyber warfare. The American people don't understand that this has been used by the Democrats. Yes. We had Norm Coleman lose an election by less than a thousand votes in Minnesota. We had uh, eight sessions lose it in the 2018 election. They knew it was manipulated by cyber warfare and the Republicans elected not to say anything. So this has been going on. And now we probably have uh, a Republican Georgia governor and his secretary of state that were involved in a pay for payoff scheme with using this system. Texas has not certified the Dominion voting machines. And there's a reason why mm. Switzerland has not certified the Dominion voting machines. All countries around the world. So there's more than enough evidence when people say, and I watch on Fox News occasionally when I watch it, I switch to Newsmax Same. and One American <laughs> Network. They're great. Because at least they're honest. Right. You know, it's I, I love what Mary Fanning said, who broke the story uh, back, I think, in 2015. She said that the founding fathers may have not understood cyber warfare, but they certainly recognized tyranny. And it's more than cyber warfare. This is psychological warfare. This is disinformation, um, you know, being being pumped out to the American people. I should say most of America were uh, unaware of what's really going on, what has really been going on in the previous administrations. It was really 2015 when President Trump went down that escalator that we realized that what he's saying is accurate. What he's saying, the issues we have in our country is accurate. And we saw the full-fledged slander attack on his life, on his family, um, on his reputation. He was very well loved. That was a big problem for the Democrats and also the treasonous uh, Republicans, because it's not just the Democrats, it's Republicans as well. Uh, my question is this, my, uh, we have a few minutes left. Um, how much do you think Joe Biden knew about this Dominion software system with hammer and scorecard, considering that he let it slip that quote, he said, the greatest voter fraud group in history has been put together. This came out of Joe Biden's mouth. How much do you think he, he's aware of what's happening or what happened? 100%, 100 Barack Obama the same, Clapper the same, John Brennan the same, Comey the same. They're all the same people right. that tried to do the Russian hoax, the Russian treasonous act, is what I call it. And and that's the danger that we are facing. People talking about, well, President Trump could make a comeback in 2024. How can you make a comeback when you already know the outcome when you're using Hammer Scorecard and the Dominion machines? How can we win in Georgia? They're, they're trying to get money and raise it. I heard a prominent... Republicans say wants a great turnout in Georgia. It doesn't matter what the turnout is because you're going to lose by 3%. No, that's Once right. Once they change those votes to digital, then you have software that makes the change. And, and that's what Americans have got to understand. And that's why it's so important, I believe, for the president to take these emergency actions. We cannot afford to let a, a glacial judicial system determine and let in people that are committing treason 
it was a slip of the tongue for Biden, but it's also the slip of the tongue for uh, uh, de Blasio's daughter, mm. who was who slipped and said Biden was able to steal the election. Look, there's so many people that know that this election was stolen, the media included. The media was, it was complicit. Fox News was complicit. They're all part of treasonous activities. That's right. And, and because they knew what was going to happen. Those people in Las Vegas, Trump was winning 8-1 to one up to about midnight or so. Then the numbers flipped on him. Those people that walked away with hundreds of millions of dollars, they are guilty of treason because they knew the outcome. And all these people that have been involved, so some of them are going to start talking if they can, if they can save from being tried. Remember, the penalty for treason is death in a firing squad. Mm. And so it's important. People are going to start flipping. Though that truck driver that drove up in Detroit at two thirty in the morning, he's not going to want to go to a firing squad. He's just saying, "Well, so and so told me." So this, if you have a proper investigation, this will blow wide open. It will be very transparent. There are going to be a lot of people fleeing the country. There are going to be a lot of people that are going to be heading for cover. So the president must take action and not let a time schedule that was determined by the founding fathers be his limiting factor. And Cancel the 14th mm -hmm. December Electoral College. Mm. Cancel the inaug inauguration. Implement his executive order of September 2018 and the Insurrection Act. Implement martial law. You know, I Sus think, yeah, go ahead. Suspend the writ of habeas corpus like uh, Lincoln and Roosevelt did. Do those things and we'll get control of this and the American people will get transparency. As I said, I don't believe all Democrats want a crooked election. I believe there's some honest Democrats and I believe there are going to be over 100 million people that voted. They're going to want to support this, these actions by the president. And he's got to be very aggressive on it. He's the only one left between us and going from a social, democratic socialist economy to communism. Okay. That's where we are. And America ought to realize it. Wake up, America. Demand our president take these very aggressive actions. Agree. Amen. You know, listen, I was born in the Soviet Union. My family brought me here when I was just a kid. We escaped communism. And I woke up in 2015 when I realized that the Democrats are, are it's not the Democrat uh, party of the JFK. You know, this is Democrat socialists of America. These are Marxists. These are communists. They hate this country. You know, Antonio Gramsci in the 30s wrote an excellent, uh, you know, it's a book. It's called The Prison Notebooks. He was actually scribing it uh, in, in his prison cell. And he he, he said, instead of, info, instead of an invasion and a violent revolution like Lenin uh, and, and the Bolsheviks have done in the in, in Russia, he said infiltration. They have infiltrated this country perfectly, geniusly, and sadistically. And it's time that we stop playing nice. I agree with you. You know, we've been playing nice for the past four or five years. We have to take a stand because this country, it's over. This is the last election we have. And I'm not trying to scare anyone out there, but this is what is actually happening. There's so much more going on behind the scenes that obviously the general is a, a privy to um, that I, you, know, you probably can't share alive. But you're absolutely right. We have to take a stand. We have to ask this president that we we know that how corrupt the system is. You know, I know it's in God's hands. I'm a Christian. Um, I know what the Lord said, two terms of President Trump. Um, we're going to keep praying for this president. We're going to keep praying for you, General, and all the, you know, all the heroes, uh, General Michael Flynn and all the other patriots that who are standing and fighting for this country because we do not want to see it go down the communism route. This is the last country. This is the last stand. And everyone in the world has been rooting on President Trump, the election, this country, because they know that he rightfully won. So we're going to continue in prayer for this president. And I, guys, share this broadcast so others can hear this as well. Um, we have to get this message to the president because really this this time is ticking. And uh, is are, are there any last words, um, General, that you wanted to say? Yes, I'd like to say, Anna, <coughs> use Twitter. I'm not in the social media, but tell the president to take these actions, take these emergency actions, make things happen, get this cleared up. Don't be a nice guy about it. 
and don't let the what the forefathers didn't fully understand let that time schedule stop you from finding out what's going on get the military involved we need to have martial law and we need to and what is martial law going to do with the, that isn't different than these democratic senate uh, governors have done with the covid isn't it strange that covid happened around the same time uh, it's all I can say, but that's for another day, Anna. Amen. The fact is, is, is wake up, America. You will demand and get what kind of government you want. If you, if you, if you sit by and say, well, it was maybe not enough evidence. You are ignorant. You don't know what's going on in your country, and you said it so well, Anna. You get it. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to wake up, America. And let them know what is happening. Amen. Well, we, we bless you. We thank you, General. We will be back. I'll be back in a little bit with a Bible study. So see you guys soon, General. God bless you.